Hello there, everyone, and welcome to Supercast Brothers, the Super Smash Brothers podcast that still nobody is watching, and honestly, I don't know that I entirely blame any of you. My name is Yantok, otherwise known as Lister, and I will be voicing Stanley the Bugman in the new Super Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> Hello, Stanley. It's me, uh, Petey Piranha. How are how are you today? Oh, good, good. I was hoping they would cast somebody good for Petey. You know, I, I'm just a big fan of the character. He's absolutely one of my favorites. Uh, I have never played Sunshine, but you know, mm-hmm. I have played Super yeah, Mario, or yeah, Superstar yeah. Saga. There you go. Yeah, yeah. It, it came easy to 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 me when in the casting room. Um, all they all they asked you to do was please retch as if you have 20 meters of sludge inside of your body i mean yep and yeah 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 it's not hard to and do. i said yeah. i'm just like and there you go i'm here to kill some bigs i hear you got some of them can you handle it turns out it's just a bunch of fighter flowers. flowers and they're all in the sewers mm-hmm. why they're wanting to fumigate the sewers i'm just like that's kind of all right, well, I'm getting a paycheck either way, so screw it. <laughs> Sketchy, yep. Yep, yep. Are the Fighter Flies voiced by Charles Martinet? No, actually, the Fighter Flies are going to be voiced <clears throat> by uh, Christopher Walken. Even better. Yes. Even better. I'm looking forward to the Charles song. Charles Martinet, they sing, however, voices the Fighter Fly boss. They call him the Fly Father. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. I bet you are. I bet you are. Well, Chucky Finster are. as well. Uh, actually, Chucky Finster is going to be voiced by Chucky Finster. It's a whole meta thing. They're getting the guy that voiced oh, him in uh, okay. the Nickelodeon All Star Brawl game. Yeah, spoiler: Chucky Finster is going to be the first <laughs> DLC character. Hope you're excited for that. Mm-hmm. He's bringing Boppo. And the here. only one. With... <laughs> and going to be the only one with voice acting in the game too. <laughs> actually, yes, yes, yeah. It's it's actually it's true. Very good. That'll be that'll be fun. That'll be quite interesting. Um, yeah, and it's something I do that all these feel, castings. Yeah, I yeah. do feel a little bit bad for the Nickelodeon mm-hmm. group considering their game released the same day that Smash revealed the uh, Final Fighter for Smash Ultimate. We don't know who that yep. is yet because we're recording ahead of time, so we it don't know. But we're just, just Stanley. The enter Buckner. name here if we had editor. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe someday. Uh, one day. Five years down one the day. line, we'll be like, hey, can you yeah. just put some extra bleeps in there and bloops? Awesome, <laughs> sweet, thanks. Here's $100 per video. Yeah. For, oh, God. Yeah, we can't do that right now. <laughs> Good deal, right? Yay, yeah, send us your applications. Yep. Uh, Supercastbrothers at gmail.com. That's not a real email address. Do not do that. Or do. I'm curious what will happen. Maybe somebody made, made it. Maybe by the time reason. this comes out. It's not I mean, a terrible idea. It's that. not a terrible no. idea. No. No. They had some feedback. Holy cow. I'm going to put that on my to-do list. Oh, okay. Um, we don't have fans yet, but okay. I mean, I have a fan behind it's, it's our lovely YouTube. piece of artwork, but uh, mm-hmm. it's not on. Yep. If I turned it on, it would be heard by the mic, so we didn't art. do that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When I move the plan is to display it nicely in my background, because I will finally be able to record in a room that doesn't have my bed behind me. Looking forward to that. Most excellent. Most excellent. Yeah. Yep. That way, while you're recording, I could be in the bed. No. <laughs> That's a... Um, no. Yeah, yep, yep. I know. Uh, yeah, he's Zantuck. I'm John O'Stanley and Petey Piranha. I just felt the need to say that because I never actually said my actual name. We, we've gotten kind, kind of bad goes. about that in recent episodes where we don't say who we are until a few minutes in. It's like if somebody new was watching this, they'd be like, What? Who? Yeah, yeah, I think right from the top. He's Zantuck and also known as Lister. I'm John, John O or Jonathan. There you yes. go. Bada bing, bada boom. Jimmy Bob, Solis. also known as PD Piranha. Yeah. Yes. Is that going to be the new thing this this year? I'm not the I'm one in charge of your Piranha. crazy jokes. This is this is a you thing. 
you always throw me some bullshit and I just have to suffer through it for the next year. Thankfully, you really cycle sludge. through it every now and then. <laughs> like, you're okay, but no retching sounds, please. I'm just going to make that request. Because that's just not... <laughs> you can make key or whatever, but no retching sounds, sir. <laughs> Dear God, because then I'm going to start retching and then the viewers are going to turn it off. And then they're going to go retching. And it's like, oh, God, this is a terrible cycle. Let's just move the fuck on from that. Cool? Cool. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Awesome. One day we're so, going to sing as Petey Piranha. Okay. No. Anywho. There's, so, in no. our last two episodes, we revealed that we were starting something new at the beginning of each episode. And just because I'm going to do it again, we're going to recap them again because, hey, so maybe there's somebody out there that only watches Smash Dashes. I don't mm -hmm. know. It's possible. But at the beginning of every on topic, we're going to be having just a bit of a, uh, hey, how's it been kind of session. Be like, hey, how are things going in our lives? What's up? What games are you playing? Anything cool happening in your life recently? Like, I revealed that I'm moving soon. So that's always fun. Uh, when we're doing yeah. a Smashtopia, we're going to be going over, doing a bit of a showcase of some things that are on the Smashtopia wiki that happened uh, off podcast. Maybe these are things that happened just years ago or something that we did kind of recently that we didn't think was going to be good for Smashtopia episode, like how I did Spyro the Dragon as a character. I didn't think he'd be a good yeah. uh, Smashtopia episode because Spyro doesn't have very many tools in his belt, and we will just kind of be making the exact same moveset, and that's not fun to talk about. As for right. Smash right. Dashes, what we wanted to do here... Since these episodes are all about uh, kind of going fairly, relatively quick on characters and discussing their merits and debating two characters against each other, or sometimes having a battle royale of four, and just doing that kind of a quick interaction with them and characters that maybe we wouldn't normally do a whole episode out of because they might be a little bit more difficult, like Super Arrow from F-Zero, be a bit more difficult of a character to make a whole thing out of. We decided to, <laughs> at the beginning of these ones, a classic game called Rate Their Chances. Mm -hmm. Rate Their Chances, I don't know when yeah. this began, but I first noticed it on the Game FAQs boards during the Brawl speculation days where people would post, hey, here is this character, let's say um, King K. Rool, because K. Rool wasn't around back then in Smash. And people would debate all day long on this character, like what they think about him, uh, if he think he can make it in Smash, what he might do if he gets in Smash, why he should begin, why he won't be in, and they would give a percentage on what they thought his chances were. And at the end of the day, whoever was running in that thread would average everybody's numbers together to create the average rate their chances number. And it was fun. When we were on Mercurios, yeah. uh, I think in between Brawl and Smash 4, I started running one for that as well. And we did the same kind of thing. And it's just a fun way to discuss characters. And we thought, mm -hmm. let's bring that to Supercast Brothers. So our plan is we're going to be discussing up to five characters in each uh, Smash Dash episode, and we're going to be alternating episodes on who is picking the character. So in this episode, all five characters were picked by me. Next Smash Dash, all five characters will be picked by Jono. It just keeps it nice and simple, really. Uh, these characters that we're picking don't necessarily have to follow any kind of theming. They are definitely not required to follow whatever kind of theming the uh, Smash Dash of the day is going to be about. It's just whoever we feel mm -hmm. like talking about. I'll talk about my yeah. thoughts on one character. Jono will then give his thoughts. I'll give a number, he'll give a number. Sometimes we might have a back and forth depending on the character, but we want things to kind of be pretty short and sweet, get through them all quickly, because we don't want to take too much time on them. And then once we have both of our percents, we'll average together for the official Super Cast Brothers rate their chances percent on each character. The only rules, we can't say 0%, we can't say 100%, and no decimals, because mm -hmm. one, decimals are complicated, two, no character is guaranteed, and three, technically no character, I've said it, well, no video game character really, has a zero percent chance because as smash 4 dlc and ultimate has shown us anything is fucking possible who thought cloud was gonna happen who thought banjo was uh -huh. coming who thought we would get fucking sephiroth but not this guy mm -hmm. never in a million <laughs> years but hey they had more than a zero percent chance as it fucking turns out i would have given cloud mm -hmm. like a five percent chance or something like that and after he got revealed, I'm yeah. going to give him Sephiroth a 2% chance. It's like, no fucking way. <laughs> but look where uh, we're at now. Uh, 
And then part of the fun of this, it's going to be oh, fun when we eventually get a character out in Smash. It's like, hey, we gave them a 2% chance. Boy, we look stupid now, don't we? That'll be the day. Yeah. This so, will be happy with that. So as we mentioned, uh, we don't know who the final uh, Smash Bros. Ultimate character is as of the time of recording this podcast. When this mm-hmm. episode goes live, we will know who that character is. So so I wanted to try and pick characters for today's right there chances that I, th- uh, I thought had no chance of being the final character. So mm-hmm. I chose characters who are either me costumes, spirits, uh, assist trophies, or some combination of the three. And I know I've said right. that, hey... We want characters. We're not technically no characters. Zero percent chance, but um, this is this, we're talking about characters when we're doing the rates of chances. We're looking at things beyond Smash Ultimate, so mm-hmm. we're not going to look at Springman and say, "Oh, Springman has a one percent chance because he's an assist trophy." If we talk about Springman, we'll be ignoring that whole thing. It will only be like, "What if he gets into the next game?" Just so we're so- clear on that. Because I know sometimes we've had that come up in terms of Smash Topias and Smash Your Dashes. Mm-hmm. So, with that, let's go ahead and reveal the first character that I'm going to be covering, or what we are covering, rather, for Rate Their Chances. A popular pick for Smash Ultimate, Skull Kid. A lot of people oh, were disappointed when he was an assist either. trophy, especially when the moon was revealed as an assist trophy first. And people thought, oh, if he's if the moon is there, maybe Skull Kid is actually going to be playable. That was baiting. That was that Didn't was Ridley happen. Smash Four level baiting. Yeah, so, Sakurai was... kind of likes doing that, and I'm just like, could you not? But as yeah. far as Skull I mean, at, Kid... least, at least, yeah. yeah. No, go on. Sorry. No, at least with Waluigi, we got that Band-Aid peel right away. That's all. It's accurate. Accurate. Mm-hmm very first one shown mm-hmm. off if we ever get any anytime smash doesn't show him off first though everybody's gonna be like wait what hold up so i think he was first revealed he was the first he one revealed for smash 4 too wasn't he maybe i maybe so probably i know he wasn't in brawl samurai goro there. was the first one for brawl which confused mm-hmm. everyone it's like what the fuck is this but <laughs> as for skull kid the, the problem I have with Skull Kid being playable isn't that I don't want him. The problem is that we haven't had a Zelda character, a new Zelda character since Brawl, and arguably since Melee, since you could argue that Young Link and Toon Link are really the same quote-unquote character. Like, obviously they're different characters, but they have that same niche in Smash. Mm-hmm. And, right. and then beyond that, every Zelda character has been a Triforce wielder, so... We don't know kind of how Sakurai is approaching things here. Uh, like based on that alone, Skull Kid feels fairly low for me. But he's also very popular, and if we do get another Zelda rep, he's got to at least be in the mix for consideration because he, because of his popularity, he's a very big fan favorite character, and he's a huge part of Majora's Mask, which is a fan favorite game. Sakurai doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. strictly pick based on uh, fan favorites. But it definitely factors into the equation because that's how we got Cape Rule and Ridley finally in Smash. It's how we Thank got God. Bayonetta in yeah. Cloud. Mm-hmm. But uh, like, I, I want I, I want Skull Kid myself personally. But the heart, the big, and while I think he is a big enough Zelda character, that I think he can get in. It's just a question of how is Sakurai approaching Zelda for Smash. Because we really haven't seen enough evidence of what he wants to do with Zelda characters, considering we got nothing new in 4, we got nothing new in Ultimate, we arguably got nothing new in Brawl. It's really hard to say. I'm, I'm very... Yeah. I'm very mixed between big Zelda character and... But will we get Zelda character? Outside of the 3? Mm. I agree, yeah. Um, wait, so how, how's this going to work? Are you going to give your chance at the, uh, I'm, I'm your percentage? My, my thoughts, or... your thoughts, and then my number, your number, because our thoughts could influence each other. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. No, I, I generally, I generally agree with you. I think, um, you know, it's obvious Sakurai so far has focused on these past few games, um, solely on tri- Triforce wielders. 
um, that could give us a maybe like a pig cannon down the road, which would be pretty badass. But beyond that, I am not sure. Um, I would like to think that we would get one off Zelda characters because just because we're dealing with a Skull Kid or a Midna um, or whatever doesn't mean that they're not beloved characters, even though they've only been in a game or two. Mm. Um, but as far as Sakurai or maybe Nintendo's influence over Sakurai has gone, uh, we haven't been getting a whole lot outside of Link Zelda Ganon. Yeah. Or enough, actually. So it's hard to say. Uh, I do think Skull Kid is one of the more likely characters. I mean, he's he's an assist trophy, which means they're acknowledging his popularity at the very least. His assist trophy sucks. Arguably two there. assist trophies. Arguably. Yeah, yeah. The Moon and Skull Kid. There you go. You've got his final smash already represented as an assist trophy right there. Um, <clears throat> I like the idea of it um, a lot. It's. I, I think I would... I, I may end up being slightly more optimistic about it than you may be because we're exhausted for another Zelda character and the only other way to maybe realistically go with another Triforce wielder is another take on a Ganon. Um, possibly a, a Age of Calamity style Zelda, maybe. So, um, eh, we'll, we'll let the percentages talk. All I right. suppose. Well, I'll, I'll preface mine by saying that if there wasn't the whole issue of the Triforce Wielder, like, if I'm, if we were, if they were, if, let's back up. If they were specifically wanting to add a non Triforce Wielder into Smash, I think the most likely options are, in no particular order here, Midna, Skull Kid, uh, I'd probably say Mifa, and then uh, Tetra. I think they had the best chances of anybody because they're all big namers. Mm -hmm. uh, outside of Mifa, they are all big in their particular game. Uh, I, I yeah. say me. I throw Mifa in there because Breath of the Wild's the most recent game, and I well, I don't know how how uh, popular each of the different four champions are. I feel like she probably has a strong popular base, and uh, in terms of the story of Breath of the Wild, I feel like Mifa has the most. She feels the most important of the four to me in the game, largely because her I family agree. is still alive. And her and Link actually had a uh, friendship outside of the whole being champions thing. So that's why I kind of mm -hmm. throw her in there. But uh, taking everything else into account, I'm going to give... I'm going to go fairly simple with this, and just because of the unknownness. I'm going to go for a 33% chance. Because a high likelihood in terms of non-Triforce wielders, but not a Triforce wielder. So mm -hmm. 33 sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. What about you? That's fair. That's fair. Um, I agree with the other characters that you say are likely. Um, they'll give you a chance to throw it out of the day, I'm sure, though. So I'm going to go on to um, just my, my final thoughts on Skull Kid and the percentage. Um, it's something I would like a whole lot. Um, and I think he's among the most likely of the most likely um, for non Triforce builders. But. <sighs> You know, it's it's so easy to fall into the pitfall of letting your wants dominate even something like this. Yeah, it's fairly objective. Um, so, I I'm gonna say he's on the higher end of the spectrum for me. Um, and thinking of other Zelda characters, I just don't know what we're getting in terms of Zelda in the next game. So, yeah, I don't know, like 40, 48. 48? All yep. right, well, average together, our outcome comes out to 40.5%. I should probably also go ahead and make it a note now that when it comes to the averaging things, well, because we're only two people, it's never going to get worse than half a percent, so screw it. We're going to track the maps. Mm -hmm. Why not? Okay, sounds good. Sounds yeah. good. So 40.5 for Skull Kid. I really should have had something where I could write that down in front of me so I don't forget it later. Ha. Huh. Oh, well. Oh, I... I don't have a notepad near <laughs> me. Oops. I'll just... Uh, <laughs> this old piece of mail. Um, I, uh, Give me a pen. We have what a... What the fuck is a pen? Ah, there's one. I did not prepare for this. There you go. Oops. That is on... <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. That's, that's a once in a lifetime thing. Well, I mean, you're not entirely wrong. So, 40, 40 and a half percent. A, uh, Currently, our most yeah. likely. Ha, look at that. 
Wow. Craziness. It's the first one, too. So, our second character, moving on ahead here, we have Sir Arthur of Ghosts and Goblins. A, uh, <laughs> I, I would say, I don't know if notorious is the right word, but a well-known NES series for difficulty. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. There's a reason I haven't played them, because I would actually... No, I haven't played one. I, for a second there, I thought I had tried one once. I was like, no, I haven't. What are you talking about? That would be hell, and you don't do hell much. Anyways, uh, Arthur, uh, fun night. He's got some. He's got a variety of weaponry, so that means he can absolutely have a move to made pretty easily. Uh, he's playable in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, uh, Ultimate 3, and in Infinite, so Capcom definitely uh, at least likes to use the guy, or at least sees potential in his fighting ability. Uh, but as far as uh, Sakurai and Smash Bros. are concerned with picking Arthur, the problem with Arthur is that Capcom has such a wealth of characters, arguably more than any other video game company outside of Nintendo themselves. They just have so mm -hmm. many good options between Ace Attorney, Okami, um, Resident Evil, Resident Street Evil. Fighter, yeah. Mega Man, Darkstalkers. There's so many good games to choose from for Capcom that I really feel like Arthur is down near the bottom of the pile. Now, if they specifically wanted a uh, old-school Capcom character, Arthur's a great pick, especially since they've already got oh. Ryu and Ken from Street Fighter. Uh, other old-school picks, I mean, they've also already mm -hmm. got Mega Man. And uh, Arthur was mm -hmm. SNES, I want to say, for his first game. I might have that wrong. In, in either NES or SNES. He's he's old school. He was NES. NES, NES okay. Yeah. yeah, so that's even perfect for him. If they want to pull somebody from that era for Capcom, then he might yeah. be the best pick that's left of their games. But mm -hmm. uh, for me overall, I'm thinking pretty low just because like there's so many, so many Capcom choices. Agreed. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny to me when people are like, you know, the ongoing meme and, and it's true. Like a game journalist just to say this often, unfortunately as well, the, the dark, dark souls, souls of whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like, have, are you a retro gamer? Have you, did you grow up in this era? Because if you did, <laughs> ghosts and goblins, um, you know, I get nothing. The dark battle souls, toes. Nothing on that. The battle toes is more Terry. difficult than dark souls. Haven't played either. Mm -hmm. Just throwing that out there. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, at least with Dark Souls, concert, you can like, learn patterns. Uh, mm -hmm. Battle Toads, just like man, you better have damn good fucking thumb timing because shit, you're dead. Yeah, yeah. It's about precision timing and and constant respawns and just craziness. Yeah, it goes um, it's funny. Ghost and Goblins is, is a game. Yeah, it, it's set in basically a house. And it also is hell to play, so it works. And you have to beat it um, twice to see the it's, real it's ending. A, it, yep, it's a it's a coin eater for sure. Um, one that I had a lot of masochistic fun with growing up. Um, I can I can kind of almost see Arthur being in if they use the retro um, guys. Like you can argue that Simon and Richter were kind of our retro representatives in this Smash. They really were, um, and they were they were third party. Yeah, so. Um, in those regards, and, and Ghosts and Goblins, uh, goes hand in hand with Castlevania too, so it'd be kind of cool to see them. But um, yeah, I, I agree though. Capcom has their that such that a would be a good trailer for him. Space. They show Simon and Richter fighting together, getting overwhelmed mm -hmm. by the monsters in Castlevania, mm -hmm. and then you just see a wall break down as a giant fucking match, like potion is thrown in. There's lance being tossed out. It's like what the fuck, and it's Arthur ready for battle. <laughs> That would be great. That would be great. Yes, I, th I think that'd be cool. Especially Castlevania is such a such a pillar. I can see Simon at least, or, or one of them being in the next Smash, regardless of cuts. Yeah. Um. Anyway, we'll we'll see. Um. But I, I agree, and and the general guys of it, he doesn't have any high chances. Yeah. So, if we're if we were picking just from classic Capcom, he's eye up there. But overall in Smash, oh. overall for Capcom, I'm going low. I'm giving the guy 10. I'm going 10%. I was thinking 15, but I was like, 15 feels generous here. So 
one's going to be 10%. I also am going 10%. All right. Wow. What is that average out there? <laughs> 10%. Holy, Holy shit. Cow. It's our lowest yet. Wow. Of the two. Dude, awesome. All right. So that's two Not down. Me. He's also uh, um, probably likewise the, the lowest yet. Possibly. Uh, our next character is one that uh, people thought was going to be in Smash 4 when their assist trophy was seemingly not being revealed. But then Isaac came back in Ultimate as an assist trophy. Why his assist trophy was missing in Smash 4? No fucking idea. But I think it's but I think he's back in Ultimate mainly because Sakura's like, oh, people liked Isaac? Huh. Well, I guess he can be what a trophy again. I'm just like, granted, I, I tried playing Golden Sun. And I don't say tried because I gave up on it. Uh, I just kind of stopped because I had other things going on. I made it to the world map when I kind of stopped. <laughs> uh, no, nothing because yeah. of a... No, not because of like anything against the game. just I had so much else going on and never never had the time to get back to it. I wonder that someplace I like, mm-hmm. experience it, whether that's just watching somebody else play it or not. Because I like my RPGs, okay. and people love Golden Sun, so why not? Uh, Golden Sun, though, with Isaac specifically... Uh, if you do anybody from Golden Sun, you have to at least start with Isaac. You can get more characters afterwards. Probably Alex, I would guess, would be the next one. But uh, Isaac, mm. I kind of feel like Sakurai <laughs> looks at Isaac and Golden Sun the way he looks at other characters like Takamaru. I haven't had a game in a long time. And I don't think he... Th- well, there's some games that he'll be like, yeah, I'll go ahead and put this in Smash even though I haven't a game in a long time. Something like Pit. I don't think that's going to happen with Golden Sun. I don't think he would put Isaac in... Unless Golden Sun got or is getting a new game. Just kind of my read Agreed. on him. Mm-hmm. But I do think that he would work very well in Smash if he can get in. Oh, yeah. The the, the synergy um, is such an interesting RPG mechanic and, and combat style. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I agree. Um, unfortunately, um, again, this is something that fan wants versus reality is is such a difficult thing to deal yeah. with. Um, yeah, especially he's another someone, swordsman. Yeah. But guess what? He can do more things than sword. He can fucking create giant hands to push things. He has plant magics. Technically, he can do other elements mm-hmm. as well. But I think he, mm-hmm. from my understanding, he's most well known for plant based magic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he is. And people um, thought he was going to be playable in Ultimate when we saw the fucking Healing Sprout as an item in that yeah. Wendy's commercial. The Grinch leak as well. Well, Grinch leak was later, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I think, yeah, the, the special exception, I think, to, to characters that are given exemptions for, for inclusion in Smash when they haven't really had a game recently have been super retro, like NES era characters. Um... And that trend may full well continue. So until we that that trend changes, we have nothing objectively um, realistic to base anything off of. So his chances may be lower than I would like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> for so, Isaac, uh, I feel like at the very least he's in. Be- for me personally, he's in between. Arthur and Skull Kid. I think he's more likely than Arthur. Oh. I think he's less likely than Skull Kid. And I'm saying this, but I know in some later episodes, I'm going to say a number for a character. And the people are like, you think they're more likely than insert character I talked about like six episodes? And we're like, well, if I was talking about them on one episode, I might not say those are exact numbers, but this is kind of going to be like kind of seat of our pants. And if we look back on the past, we'll be like, oh, maybe I should have said that for that. Just mentioning this now. Yeah. But Isaac... Any of the numbers I'm debating just don't feel quite right with what I want to say. But I think mm-hmm. I'm just going to go with... I don't think quite 20% chance, because so even then, like, that feels a little generous to me. So I'm going to go with... But but 15 also doesn't... Feels kind of too small, so I'm going to go with 18%. Yes. Yeah. I think, he, I think he has a slightly higher... I think he has a little bit of a higher chance than that. I'm going to be more generous... Um, only because if we're looking at Game Boy Advance era 
and they want to pull something from there, or they understand That's fair. fan demand. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. Um, yeah. Yeah. And when we understand fan demand a little, we know that they know who we want. At the very least, they know that. Um, with between so Smash I will Bell say, and just Twitter, yeah. Nintendo knows yeah, what characters absolutely. people are really wanting. Mm-hmm. Well, yep, care absolutely. Not, it's and I, right. And they, to give them credit, they care a fair bit like more than they did in past smashes with this one, with yeah. um, Banjo-Kazooie, with Ridley, with K. K- Rule, etc., 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 with Simon. Um, so, I'm going to say... I'm just going to go with what I was going to say sooner, which is thir- 35%. Okay. Averaging together, that's going to come out to twenty six and a half percent, and I'm, I'm, I think I'm okay with that number, especially when you brought up the point of like, if they specifically want oh, a, uh, like a Game Boy Color era character that has still popularity, I think that's a good choice. Yeah. And also, most of the yeah. Game Boy era is already picked clean, so mm-hmm. there ain't much left to They're choose gonna be like, from. Here's Muddy Mole. <laughs> here's the ha- here's Suit Hakun. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that's, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here's a character that we actually talked about pretty recently on the podcast. Uh, Crystal mm-hmm. from Star Fox. Oh, cursed. My old phone. Uh, that's cursed. <laughs> so Crystal, for me, yeah. had she had a lot of popularity after Adventures and after Assault. Very popular yeah. character. Most people said uh, after that game, after this game, like, she's the next pick for... For Smash, right? People oh, yeah. people thought that she was going to be the next we would get in Brawl. But we got Wolf instead. There was some confusion there. But I think Wolf largely just got in because, hey, um, clone. And Wolf was one of the last characters to add to the game. We know this because of the Subspace Emissary. Uh, Wolf, Jigglypuff, and Toon Link were the only three that didn't have anything to do in the story. They were all post-game secret characters. Which is kind of interesting because... Mm-hmm. Jigglypuff has been nearly cut multiple times. Like, she's always on the chopping block. It's kind of funny. But Wolf was very much a <laughs> last-minute edition character, and it was made because he could be based off of Fox and Falco. So Crystal, in that regard, never had a shot in Brawl. Because Sakurai was... In. If she mm-hmm. did, she would have been there. But I think... Yeah. Like, Crystal, like she's got that popularity. She's got the staff, which you can easily make a completely new moveset on, make her a oh, unique yeah. character... That's something that Sma- that Sakurai loves doing, is taking characters with mechanics or types of fighting that aren't represented yet. Her staff, the way she fights with that, arguably the way Fox fought with that, the way she could fight with it, should have fought with it, <laughs> uh, would be new to Smash. That's that's a new idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can also throw in other um, weapons that we see, like Assault Lane Combat or whatever else. Personally, I think just go with the full-on staff combat, but that's just me. The only problem with Crystal is Command really fucked her character up. And then in Zero, she just mm-hmm. wasn't there at all. Zero is such a weird game. It's just... It's like, hey, let's make the Light mm-hmm. of Wars for a fourth time. Jesus fucking shit. Granted, I kind of give a pass to 64 3D. But it's just so weird yeah. that it exists the way that it does. But ignoring yeah. that, uh, looking at Crystal's popularity, looking how Crystal's uniqueness came into play, I still say she has a decent shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've seen assist trophies reach um, higher echelons following their initial debut. We've seen it with Little Mac, seen it with Isabel. I can't recall off the top of my head if we've seen it with any others, but those two definitely. Um, and Crystal could be something along those lines. Um, we haven't seen her. Star Fox is kind of in limbo as we cover in our season three debut on topic things. So yeah. Let's check it out. <laughs> but um, it's still a fairly popular franchise. One that I think is well liked amongst uh, Smash with us fans yeah. in, in development and soccer. Right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, the moveset writes itself. Um, I think she has as much of a shot as a lot of other characters. Um, it's it's kind of like this nebulous space, um, but it's not like a negative shot. So. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I, I think part of Crystal's problem is the fact that she's just been kind of missing for a while. Uh, and to be fair, mm-hmm. people made that same argument for why King K. Rool shouldn't be in. But I think the difference between Crystal and King K. Rool is that K. Rool is SNES era. He's been with us for a long time. And it wasn't just him that was dormant. It was Donkey Kong that was pretty dormant. And then, yes, he wasn't there in um, Returns or in Tropical Freeze. They were focusing on different villains. But uh, he still had that legacy behind him. Crystal doesn't so much have that legacy. Mm-hmm. And Graham, by that same token, she's been missing far less in terms of years than K. Rool. So it's kind of mm-hmm. kind of hard where you really want to judge things there. But for me, I'm kind of looking at Krista more positively than the previous three characters. And I'm actually going to feel mm-hmm. largely based on her unique. Because I, I still don't think I would put her in the overall yes, you're going to happen, which is kind of where I'd say 50% or higher is the you have really good chances. I'm still going to slot her in the 40% slot. I think she has a strong shot, mm-hmm. but um, the fact that she's just been gone for a while kind of hurts her for me. Yeah. I gotcha. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to place her higher than Skull Kid, but I, I will be more of the others. Um, I guess I'm just more optimistic as Zelda's um, chances to get something unique. But um, as far as... Um, and, you know, from, from my perspective, anyway, more, that's more of a... Um, priority than another Star Fox character. But, um, no, you say 40, I'll say 42. Well, I think I know what that average is out to. 41% <laughs> chance. Currently our high is just tick over Skull Kid. Yep. All right. Well, that's going to bring us to our final Raise Our Chances character for this episode. And we'll be able to jump into our Smasher Dash. This one is Nobody. a character who arguably is already playable as a costume. Yeah. Alf. Alf from Pikmin 3. So here's how I'm approaching Alf. Uh, I think there's two ways to look at this. If we look at him as Alf being like his own unique fighter, not a clone or an Echo, not a semi-clone, even just like his own thing, Alf is like, mm-hmm. no, not happening. I just... I have a hard time imagining how different Pikmin characters can really be unique amongst each other, considering how old Mark is in Smash currently. It's possible. Mm-hmm. I just don't personally have no, a vision yeah. of it. But I think mm-hmm. Alf has a very incredibly strong chance of coming out of that alt costume status, which he's been into for two games now, and becoming an actual Echo or Clone Fighter. The fact that he wasn't turned into that in, in Ultimate is a major surprise to me, considering uh, Lucina and uh, Dark Pit, who were as cloney as you can be in Smash 4, and were uh, originally costumes in that game that got pulled out into their own characters. I'm shocked Alf wasn't. It's ludicrous Seriously. to me. It's like you introduce this whole new Echo uh-huh. concept, which is really a reskin of clones. And it's like, oh yeah, these characters were originally costumes, but I changed that and make them their own things. Like, why can't Alf be the same? I don't understand. It's a it's a desecration. It's it's a it's a great disrespect to Pikmin, um, and Pikmin fans that needs to be remedied. Um, it's absurd this, and then just like the dysfunction between Crom being an Echo as well as a portion of yeah. Robin Final Smash. Those are the two things that really peeve me about base game ultimate. Yeah, that I need shame. Because, if, I, if I could God. eliminate one echo and replace them with a new echo, it would be drop crown, put an elf. Yeah, yeah, don't see any disagreement with me there. You probably would from this mass community, they'll be mad, even though well, they don't crumb like fans. Fire would be mad. So, so, we had, so yeah. specifically, crumb oh, and fire emblem fans. Yeah, there you go. That's Don't that's you know better. he has his fans? Yeah, that's a better view there. I just yeah. don't care about yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I played Good Awakening guys. and I didn't really give a fuck about, about it. Honestly, no. I didn't give a fuck about most of the cast in Awakening. It's like, you guys, a lot of the characters, it's like, oh, hey, we got introduced. And now we are not in the story. It's like, okay. I feel like. Most of most of them, yeah. Yeah. Three like, Houses did it. Did going much into the did. game. Even Bates kind of did. Yeah. Going into playing Awakening, the internet convinced me that Tharia and Tiki were going to be big parts of the story. 
they weren't. Mm. Nope. Almost every character in the game removed. could be removed um, and nothing changes in the story. Yep. Yep. Except for Walhart. He's absolutely necessary. What a guy. Um, better than yeah, Marcellus. but still. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you with Alf, though. He's he's not going to be his own unique thing. Um, I mean, you can you can have like the Pikmin chain. You can have just Rock Pikmin or whatever. Um, but that's you know semi clone or maybe like a quasi clone at best. Yeah. Um, there's still really elements of. But no, I, I would just like to see him as an Echo, and I and I think that he has really strong chances in those regards, mm-hmm. or at least and, he should. And I they mean... definitely can separate them out if they really wanted to. Uh, as much as I don't like mm-hmm. the tether recoveries, Olmer can get that one back. Alf can get the wing Pikmin. Alf can utilize rock Pikmin yeah. and more for his throwing than maybe uh, regular Olmar's own Pikmin. Like especially, don't give Alf the white or the pink or the purples. Pretty simple there. Mm-hmm. there there's several ways you can do it. Absolutely. But um, oh, yeah. I think oh, most yeah. likely he's going to be an echo, if anything. And I think his echo chances, I'm going to throw him at 80%. And that extra 20 is just because of Sakurai weirdness. <laughs> Assuming he already didn't do it twice. Uh-huh. Um, I don't see why not. What the hell. Um, maybe the October 5th reveal is going to be Burrowing Snagger upgraded as the Promises Trophy. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> so I, I like the 80% number. I was originally going to go a little higher, but after you said soccer weirdness and pointed that out, uh, yeah. So 80% for me too. All right. Well, that currently puts things at, uh, Arthur, our lowest character, 10%, all the way up to 80% for our highest character, Alf. I'm sure we'll have lower numbers. I'm sure we'll have higher in the future, but for now that will be for a future episode. Now let's get into our actual content of the evening, morning, afternoon, Fun and whenever you're times. watching this, it's time for the Smash or Dash. So this one is going to be a bit of a special one for the two of us, because for the last oh, yeah. year and a half, two years, we've been kind of having our mm-hmm. own private long form series of Smash Dash, just in our own private messages between each other in our uh, private Discord server that we have. Where we, I got bored with mm-hmm. it, I'm just like, I'm going to make a huge tournament bracket yeah. of 128 Nintendo characters and 128 third party characters. And then we were like, okay, let's look at them and let's do mini debates on them all. Who would we put in the Smash of these two? Very much a Smash Dash format. Uh, actually, I think we started this shortly after Season 1 started, if I remember it correctly. Like, I want to see a couple months after we started Super Cash Brothers. But, and then there's times where we would have ties instead of yeah, being like, was, obviously, yeah. an audience break it i just messaged somebody that we knew at random be like hey pick a character out of these two and we just move forward with that uh about oh. midway yeah. three fourths of the way through season two we finally got to the final round for both the nintendo bracket and the third party bracket we were just like we could end this now or we could make it a smash or Death episode so our opponents in this episode may not immediately become apparent as to why they are each other's opponents and that's why because they weren't chosen to be each other's opponents like we typically choose uh, characters for Smash Dash. It's just these were the final two characters that we ended up with for the characters that we most wanted for these particular brackets. Uh, there is some mm-hmm. arguability here. I don't think if these are actually our two most wanted because, you know, that's just how tournament brackets kind of work. But we did have a uh, loser's bracket, so it does really kind of boost that up a little bit. It makes it a little bit more accurate for us in our opinions. So, our first one, we're going to go with the Nintendo characters first. This matchup shall be Gino of Super Mario RPG versus Marks of Kirby Superstar Saga. We both want these characters a lot. Uh, Mm -hmm. These are very strong choices for us personally. And I was kind of thinking earlier today, like, is there a way that we can actually connect these two characters besides just our bullshit? Yeah, actually, I figured there is. Both these characters are associated with the stars in some form. Both of them seek out the title hero for help. One of them actually helps out the hero. The other one is a dick. And they both heavily <laughs> deal with wishes. It's like, these characters actually mm-hmm. fit each other pretty well. I was surprised when I was actually thinking all this through. So, Gino versus Marks. 
I'm just gonna no, throw things to you first. What the fuck do you think about this? <laughs> uh, let's throw the uh well, let's start out with Gino. I mean that's uh the golden boy in the room for a lot of Smash fans, um in some respects us included. Um historically. Um uh, there there have been pop there have been characters that are uh, more prevalent in Mario RPGs, more prevalent in Mario series, but none as I think beloved by no, long term as... Nintendo or Smash fans and Mario fans. Yeah. N- none that like people just immediately latched onto like who cares about Prince Peace? Mm-hmm. Really nobody. Mm-hmm. Uh I mean you could say Paper mm-hmm. Mario, but really that's just another Mario. Mm-hmm. Uh mm-hmm. really the only other Mario RPG character that I think I captured attention on a level <clears throat> even close to Gino. It's Fawful. But I think that's for yeah. very different reasons. Fawful, Fawful was created at a time where LOL So Random was a huge part of the internet. That's kind of fallen <laughs> off. And it's good that it's fallen off. Not that, you know, LOL XD. Random is strictly bad, but that was definitely a time in internet history. And Fawful very much oh, falls yeah. back to that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was. Fawful was a great character he has a lot of fighting potential but i i agree that it was uh for the meme gino um has a certain mystique about his character um and a a nobility about his character that begets the fact that it's a star spirit instead of a doll yeah you know it's uh and it's it's from the first speaking to legacy speaking to k roll being in the game after not appearing and being on the mario baseball title in a long time or so on and so forth um, legacy still is important in Smash, yeah. and both of these characters, Gino and Marks, have legacy to their series. Marks being, um, he has a fucking awesome boss fight in Ultimate already. That's pretty cool. Um, and I wonder if their argument could be that that might be the best representation of Marks that we could possibly have in a game like this. Yeah, it's um, a good boss fight, but really good boss fight. Really cool. Um, pulled straight from Superstar, basically. Um, they both have a lot of a menagerie of abilities available to them. Um, Mark started off an entire trope for Kirby's with the with the yeah. friend betrayal. So <laughs> it's happened what three and, times and now. Megalore, Car- Mark's Megalore, yeah. Susie. Uh huh. Yep. And Mark, and neither of those other two characters are nowhere near as cool as Mark's. Like holy cow. Um, yeah, a lot of so, people called for Megalore for ultimate. It was just like. Well, you have Marks, but you have Maglor. He's newer. It's like Maglor just—I don't know. He looks like I could kick him, like a beach ball. Like, <laughs> sure, I could kick Marks too, but he doesn't look like a character I want to kick. I want to kick Maglor. Uh huh. Maglor is a fairly generic-looking character. You know, he has some stuff up his yeah. sleeve, but nothing quite as interesting as Marks. Um, so Susie, like eh, you can make an argument. Whatever. Susie does look like she would be a cool fighter. Like I'll, I'll agree to that. Sticker Mark and a Magalore, Mac man. I don't like, care yeah, but Magalore. Yeah, absolutely. Like somebody that I could kick absolutely. Like a ball. Mm-hmm. I like. I can imagine just having the squeak sound when they, my foot hits them. <laughs> That's what happened in Kirby uh, Return to Dreamland. So did it? Um, not quite, but oh, may damn as it. well. Have. Um, <laughs> Mark's. Um, and he, and he just has this unsuspecting nature to him. Like he's just a soft little fluffy friend who's around on the adventure, rolling around on his ball, using ball-based attacks the entire time. And then he turns into a freaking Demon. eldritch beast yeah. nightmare. Like, holy crap. I mean, to be um, fair, like Mark's with the wings genu- doesn't look yeah. terrifying, but when Mark's using certain attacks, like the heart veins behind him or the shadowy eye drop things, like, okay, splitting in half. And creating a black hole, and it's like that's that's a choice you just mm-hmm. made, sir. I don't think you needed to make yep. that choice. <laughs> just, it's just the wild. That he can make like the fight just, itself yeah. is eldritch, yeah. but, I, but I think Marks with wings isn't strictly eldritch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, but um, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty neat. Um, as far as Gino goes. I mean, the the story is um, as golden and classic as I think it can be. Um, I mean, do you do you want to speak to these two characters too? I'm just uh, 
Sure. Looking to your, you made a Gino move set. Uh, I made a move set both. I have card. both of their move sets yeah. on the wiki. Uh, Gino, yeah. um, you don't know, care too close to my childhood. Super Mario RPG was one of the first games I played. It was one of the core four games of my childhood. It was my first RPG. It was my gateway to that ge- to that genre of games. Uh, really, in terms of his own game, he actually has very few attacks. Like, yeah, he can shoot little pellets out of his handgun, and sometimes little stars, spinning, which can he had equipped. Uh, he's got a giant laser mm-hmm. cannon that he can shoot from his arm. He can boost his own attack strength or an ally's attack strength. He can throw discs of energy, Dragon Ball style, I guess, uh, which can be crazy damaging move for that one. Gino Blast, where he summons like a rainbow of lights to just like start hitting the field. Gino Flash, he shoots a cannon of energy that kind of looks like a spiraling sun. I don't really know how to describe that attack too well, but it's a giant energy blast that comes out of a cannon pretty much yeah beyond that he yeah. really doesn't have much so it kind of makes a move making a booster fan both easy and difficult because like hey here they are here's your list of things but some of them are slightly more difficult to translate like i've seen people suggest oh geno boost can be the up special and the arrows that boost the stats just push them up in the air but i really don't see that happening for his move like maybe geno mm-hmm. boosts it but i don't think it's going to be like Arrows push him up in the air. I'm not really sure about that one. That that the up special for Gino is the hardest move to come up with, personally. I think, unless you're going to do Gino Blast mm-hmm. and you put him in the cannon and he just gets shot like a human cannonball, that'd be fucking cool, to be honest. <laughs> but then it's of like, okay, yeah. but now what happens to his other moves? Like, are they going to use Gino Flash for both that and like a down special or something? Is Gino Blast can be his final mm-hmm. smash? Gino World aside, Gino being the standard. I mean, some of those easily make sense. The beam and whirl uh, and blast all make easy sense. But then what are you doing with boost and flash? If anything, it's really hard to say. Marks, Kirby Star Allies. It's right there. Yep. There is so... Yep. They, they, Kirby Star Allies, anytime you want to make a move set for a Kirby game, if the character is playable in Star Allies, look at Star Allies. That game gives you so much material to pull from. That's what I looked at when I was making marks. That's what I've looked at when I've tried to research other Kirby characters. Like, I was trying to come up with things for Rick, Kind and Koo. And it's... My ideas for Rick, Kind and Koo are not just gelling quite right in my mind. I still want to do it. But I'm reaching complications, particularly because of Kine. And the whole water aspect with him. It's like, fucking Christ. I can't do <laughs> what I want with it. Love, love. But someday I'll probably figure it out. What, how, how do I want how mm-hmm. I want to approach it? Ooh, that was gross. Uh, but Marks, <laughs> um, all, also all the characters and Star Allies, they can combine their attacks with different elements, which change properties of the attacks. Like Marks can kick a, his ball, but have the ball be infused with with water energy or electric or wind or fire. I uh, don't think maybe is ice also a separate one. I'm not sure. I don't remember it for exactly. But yeah. they all have these yeah. different ones, and it's like, okay, you can do easily things like that. I think for mine, I had Splash Ball, I think it was, uh, used in Mark's moveset. Uh, in like his classic Thunder, or not Thunder, his arrow attack, where he just shoots a whole bunch of arrows forward. I think yeah. I combined that with the electric uh, element, mm-hmm. which you don't strictly have to do that. You can just pull the attacks from his boss fight, even. Um, but I added oh, the yeah. elements to have just some little bit of something extra in there to make him a little bit more <coughs> oomph for a smash. But mm-hmm. it's very easy to make mm-hmm. a move set for him based on just both his boss fight and how he works with Star Allies. It's, Star Allies is a gift for any Kirby fan that wants to make a Smash move set. People can argue that oh, it's yeah. an easy Kirby game, and I can't fight that argument because I haven't played it. The only Kirby game I've actually put real time into was Air Ride, which, amazing yeah. game! Uh, and I mm-hmm. would like to play Star Allies mm-hmm. in full, but I kind of want to play that one multiplayer. And uh, I kind of have to convince yeah. Twilix to do that because I don't think it's, I don't think it has online multiplayer, does it? Nope. God damn it! Fuck. If it did, I'd be like, "Hey, fun. Jono, you want to record some Star Allies? That'd be fun." Yeah, got it. It's like, so hey, Jono, you want to you want to take a flight um, down here, and we can just like play Star Allies in like two weeks. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Star Allies is a, is a fairly pedestrian, even for a Kirby game, but. Um, with the DLC, it's like people who play Kirby. Say pedestrian. Don't really care. The new Kirby game has him in a destroyed city, 
You don't get more much more yeah. pedestrian than cities. No, that's true. That's gonna be fucking cool, dude. That looks um, look so good. Seriously, um, it's give me more Kirby's online Ultimate multiplayer, but I mean basically platformers, yeah, Nintendo, yeah. so I can play them with people. Precisely, precisely. I mean, this is like Odyssey for Kirby. Like, holy cow! Yeah. Um, so that's pretty. Cool. Although some people think uh, it might I, be more yeah, of a three D land where it's levels, but they're three D levels, which still it looks good. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. Kirby being three D for the first time and making it is huge. Um, ah, gosh, you know, the thing with the Gino is he is such a beloved character, um, and has a really strong move set potential, just with the five or six things that you have him do in Mario RPG. And there's only so many different ways to configure them. Yeah. The thing with Marks is that he stands on his own as a, as a legacy character as well, um, in a very very much beloved and well wanted Kirby character. Um, and he has like 20 different things you can get and yeah. just shove in there. So from a from a moveset potential perspective, I mean, I think Marks might be more interesting, but the but the looming the what Gino represents for Smash, if you were to get in, looms so heavily over over this discussion and every other that it that it cannot possibly not be taken into consideration as well um so uh it, it is it's pretty evenly matched and it, it's it's an interesting pair uh, these two and they have were more similarities in the to make it to yeah. the end of our tournament that we did agreed agreed and and i come here and and it's almost a lament because only one can move forward <laughs> it's like holy cow yeah um yeah yeah um, how are you feeling? Is there is there anything more to discuss before we make our decision? Um, the, the big thing I would say with these characters is that if we were coming at this in terms of rate their chances, Marks would be very high. Like, he would be... Mm -hmm. I, I think... Like, granted, he's a boss in Ultimate, so I think maybe that would take him down a bit, because we've already seen what Sakurai thinks of the character. But we've also already seen what Sakurai thinks mm -hmm. about a character like Ridley. And how those thoughts can change. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if mm -hmm. he actually knew um, popular things beforehand, but I think he saw the when people see a character be out of the Smash in some way other than a character, they react. And I think when he saw Mark's his boss reveal, it was like, oh wow, people actually really like this character as a character too, wanting to be playable. Huh. I, I think I would put him in at least the eighty percent range. Uh, the only, the only thing agree. that really hurts with that. Similar to the Zelda characters, no new Kirby since Brawl. And whether that's because of yeah. the infamous joke of Sakurai having bias towards classic Kirby or not, hard to say. But also, didn't he make Superstar? Pretty sure he did. Yeah, Mark's just So character. Mark should be yeah. in his house. Mm hmm Bring on Mark. Bandanity was Five. on Superstar as well. <laughs> I don't, I'm not excited about Bandanity. I don't... There's better options, yep. in my opinion. But yeah. uh, on the same yeah. token, if we were doing Reach the Chance for Gino, he'd be way down the list. I want him in. I want both his characters in. But Gino's reality, I hate to say it, not very good. He'd be more in yeah. the 10% yeah. range. Yeah, this... That. It lends itself to what I, th I was talking about earlier. Um with characters who we want versus what is reality. Um, and, and we've seen that. I mean, Sakurai, it, it's the point where Sakurai and Nintendo, they know we want this character. And I think at the whole, the hold up at this point is that he is at least partially or mostly by a third party being Square. And Square might not want to be able to come to that ball game. They, they're saying, choose a Sephiroth, choose yeah. a hero, not... Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it was actually um, from a Square employee, but I know there was there was some something that came out in an interview or something. I don't I don't know the true source when this is, but they were saying like, yeah, we see people wanting Gino in Smash, but we don't want to do this just because people like want him in Smash. We like we don't see people asking for a Mario RPG two or Mario RPG remix, like because we think it's a bigger pipe dream than Gino in Smash. That's why. <laughs> like yes Seriously. give me a Mario RPG remake yes give me a sequel 
fucking get it. I will buy. I will, I don't pre-order games, but I'll pre-order that mm-hmm. shit. No, oh, yeah. I'm also gonna pre-order Absolutely. Splatoon three because it's Splatoon fucking three. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you put in your order for the three hundred dollar edition of Final Fantasy VII remake. I mean, Square needs to know that you're a loyal customer, so well, they should listen. To you. Mm, I don't care about Final Fantasy twelve or thirteen or fifteen. <laughs> or two, or three. Like, listen, listen, that's pretty much the. That's, you that's my put... bottom five. Two, three, <laughs> twelve, thirteen, fifteen. Yeah. I can't accurately rate eleven or fourteen because MMOs. But uh, it's an easy bottom five. Mm-hmm. Listen, if if you put Gino in Smash Square Enix, yeah. we will accept give you my putting kidneys. Lightning and Noctis in Smash as well. I mean, there you go. There's your, there's your sale. I mean, at this point in time, <laughs> Square probably doesn't care that much about Lightning anymore, so I don't think we have to worry about that. And by the time a new Smash comes around, yeah. 16 will be the new hotness, so we don't have to worry about Noctis anymore. There you go. There you go. That's you can put true. the 16 Who's protagonist in. Games? There you go. There you go. You can you can put uh, Saz in as well. In you can lives. put in... That weird beast like creature that's kind of Red 13 esque in Urguy's whatever the fuck the rest of that subtitle <laughs> that game is called. Something I of the Ring. About that God, Jesus uh-huh. Christ. Uh-huh. What the fuck is that <laughs> game? You can put in Chocobo from Chocobo GP Racing or whatever the fuck it's called. God, I, they, some intern in Square was just like, you know what we haven't got, you know what we haven't had in a while? Mario Kart. I miss Mario Kart. Hey, why don't we make a Mario Kart game? That's that's how that there conversation you. had to go down. I refuse to believe anything mm-hmm. else. It was absolutely somebody's going like, I miss Mario Kart. We should make one. Come on. Yeah. There's no fucking yeah, way. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, it looks uh, great. So. It looks so good. St- I can't believe Steiner mm-hmm. is in it. Like, I... I believe Vivi, because Vivi is a very popular character, even outside of, of FF9. Mm-hmm. But how shocked seeing Steiner. It's like, ooh. That's yeah, a they left put hand Steiner in Smash if, if we get, you know, how about that? If we get a Final Fantasy IX character, I think Steiner would be a fun assist trophy. I will say that. I think he could be a... The mm-hmm. assist has to be either Steiner or Vivi. I guess it could also be uh, Garnet. But nobody else really works for me. Yeah, yeah. Or like yeah, VV yeah, plus Steiner, absolutely. I think would work really well because VV can just mm-hmm. like his whole. Th- if you have the two of them in a party together in nine, Steiner has a new attack type called Sword Magic, where what any magic that VV knows, mm-hmm. he will cast that magic on Steiner's sword for a melee attack. It's fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. You can also just have VV be playable as the Black Mage archetype. I mean, you could. Yeah. Yeah, look at all these free ideas. Just put Gino in and give you Yes, or give us another um, Dissidia, but not one that sucks. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that might be a taller order than Gino and Smash. <laughs> hey, the first two were good. NT is where it went mm-hmm. downhill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't even I'm not opposed to the 3v3 um, format or in the bigger maps. But the whole changing mm-hmm. of the Brave and HP system, the Bravery and HP system worked really well, I thought. But then they changed mm-hmm. how like the whole attacks mm-hmm. works. Like, that ain't it. No, no, not at all. Um, you know, and and another thing these two characters share, uh, Marx is my first is my most wanted Kirby character by far. Gino is my most wanted Mario character by far. Yeah. Um. Waluigi's I would agree with that. There. I would agree um, with that. Yeah, yeah, but still. So, um, so there's also that aspect. I mean, these are very two very, very, very top two characters. I mean, to the point where both of these characters, I would say, they're like in my top five most wanted characters. Period. Yeah. So, holy cow, this is uh, <laughs> fairly difficult. Fairly difficult. I um, mean, for me, these two. Yeah. I really want. I would love both of these in. But for me, it comes down like again. This is, this is a uh, smash reduction. This is not what we think is likely. This is what yeah, we want. 
if Sephora is like, you can pick one of these two characters to add into the game, which one do you want? It will no. happen. It's purely our bias. And my bias mm -hmm. gives me my answer. Mine as well. Mine as well. All right. Um, yeah. Just peel that bandit off. I got to go for it. How can I not? Okay. In fact, in the bingo episode, I said, who is my number one of number ones? Gino. Mm -hmm. Give me. I want it. Yep. Yep. And I will say, um, I will iterate a, an in-joke that is that has pervaded much of the ultimate release cycle between us, which is simply Gino Give. Gino Give. Gino Give. Just, just becoming a callback to our Neanderthal origin, uh, becoming feral for this need for it just Gino. It gets worse and worse with each game. Fortunately, we're not the Twitter crazies uh -huh. who uh, spam Sakurai with hate messages whenever they don't get what they want. You know who you hate are. Hate messages, porn, death routes, whatever. Yeah. yeah. You, you know who you are if you're listening. Fuck off of this podcast. Eat shit. <laughs> All right. So our second matchup. I mentioned how we did a tournament at 128 Nintendo characters. And you might be thinking, okay, but Gino is third party. Okay, it, 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 shut, shut up. Just shut up. He only appeared in the Nintendo games, so. Yeah. Eh. He's only been in Mario games, so he counts for me. Yes, technically he's, he writes that line, mm -hmm. but shut up. Okay. Now that we moved <laughs> on. Uh, I also mentioned that we did one for our third party characters. And when it came to our top two for this one, I think the journey for these two characters was both harder because I think each of these characters is more in a particular, uh, I think can't think of the word here, but we, we, each, we each, these are a little bit more divisive for us, not in a bad way, but we're not as united on these two like we were for Gino and Marx. They faced some tiebreakers that had to be broken in each of their favors. And that would be yeah. Spyro the Dragon and Amaterasu of Okami. So, <laughs> he's ready for war over here. And you know what, motherfucker? <laughs> I am too. What? What? Azurda flies through sky? I mean, I, I don't know. Well, he... Okay, I think Azurda is closer to a dragon. So, is Azurda voting for Spyro? I have no idea. I'll see where his allegiance is. He looks fairly like. dragon-like to me. Mm -hmm. But where will Chucky vote? Or Bio Miracle Bokutate? Chucky vote? will vote for whatever is less scary to him. Which is probably Amaterasu. <laughs> also, uh, I mentioned how uh, it turns out that Marks and Gino actually had a lot that kind of connected them for a good Smash or Dash uh, rivalry. It's the same thing here with these two characters. Uh, not only are these both characters that come from games that each of us individually are like huge fans and champions of, but um, they are both quadrupeds. They are both heroes in their games. I mean, of course they are. It's video games. Uh, each of them are called on to save particular realms. Uh, in Spyro's case, he saved three different realms. One of them hadn't seen dragons in years. Uh, in Amaterasu's case, it's one realm, but they hadn't seen... Uh, I'm only partway through the Okami Let's Play I've been watching, so I might have some things here wrong but who hadn't seen Amaterasu or her previous self in many years. So there's been new evils that yep. have arrived in those times. Also, each of them have a insect companion that follows them the entire game. Spyro has Sparks, Very true. the dragonfly. Amaterasu has Isun, mm -hmm. the bug boy. Is he a particular bug? <laughs> He's more of a boy than a bug. He's just bug-sized. I don't quite understand what Isun is supposed to be, other than a pervert. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's fairly accurate. That's that's yeah. about all I can understand of Isun. When he directly refers to characters as busty beauties, like, dude, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. He, he's, Cameo, he's, he's more of like on. a sprite, right? Like, he's, he's, he's human-esque, but he's very small. He just and looks the, like the ongoing bug. joke is that he's a bug. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't help that he's wearing, like, a beetle helmet. Come on, man. 
Help yeah. yourself out. <sighs> Between these characters, though, I mean... You know, I'm just going to let you start. Go, just get it out of your system. Go. Get, 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 get. <laughs> okay. Um, I will save kind of like the Spyro thing for you. I like Spyro. I will say that. Um, and I, I mean, we, I just haven't there's... finished watching her game. Yeah, there, there's there's a fair bit to Spyro's character that's enjoyable. I want Spyro in more than any other Activision character. I far. want Alan um, Tarasu in more than any arguably Clover slash Platinum character. Yeah, there you go. There you I go. want Amy more than um, and, than and I want Bayonetta to stay in Smash. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Nothing against what Bayonetta. Uh, I just argue, I just yeah. don't care much. I did watch both her games, but her trailer, yeah, yeah. Bayonetta, I think, the Bayonetta three trailer was more yeah. exciting to me than anything else I saw in Bayonetta's. Well, the very least Bayonetta one. Bayonetta two has some good stuff. Bayonetta one was kind of boring. Yeah, I, I think uh, coming from coming from off of the the was it accurate kind of assessment of the Smash Ballot saying, oh Bayonetta was the most voted and blah blah blah. Yeah, um, and, and our kind of rage at that. Um, I still yeah, don't there, there's believe more that. interesting. I, I feel like they picked Me Bayonetta, either. and they were just like, oh, she got a lot of votes. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um, but I, I think coming from off of that and then looking at her games, credit where it's due, they're, they're kind of cool. So, whatever. But, um, yeah, I agree. Um, out, of the, out of the characters created by Hideki Kamiya um, and, and all of this trollish glory, I think Amaterasu is... The most interesting well, one, and we can probably agree. Um, I, maybe, well, or wait, did he? Dante, though. Did he make Dante? Yeah, yeah he made Dante yeah. Cry. Who? In the first couple yeah. Resident Evils. But okay, I, don't, so, I don't know if yeah, uh, yeah. Devil May Cry was under the Clover umbrella or not. I'm not really sure about right, that. Right, right. Um, um, so, interestingly enough, Amaterasu beat Dante in a, in a tiebreaker um, <laughs> to get into the spot. So there's that. Um, she also won in like seven oh. other tiebreakers throughout the course of that. Uh, the the Clo Clover Studio only made uh, the beautiful Joe games Okami and God Hand. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we can still say that uh, Amaterasu was the only one under, or the one of the most one under the Clover Platinum Games branch because Dante was not under that. <laughs> he worked on it, but Dante was not part of Clover. Well. Uh... Bada bida da bada bida, as they say. Um, so the thing about Amaterasu is she is, uh, appears to the people of, of Nippon as a wolf, using standard white wolf. Um, but they know the stories of her predecessor, Shira, Shiranui, eating the, the dragon demon Orochi like a hundred years before the events of Okami. So she comes in and they're like, oh, crap, it's it's the sun god who uh, Amaterasu is a, is a wolf embodiment of the sun goddess in Japanese culture and mythology. Um, and has a number, and Eason, who is a wandering artist, who's his, her traveling companion, who's the, who's the size of a bug who rides around on their nose and says things that aren't agreeable. Um, but he, uh, but they, together they command the celestial brush, which is given to them at the start of the game. Um, wait, 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 hold on, hold yeah. on, you said together, yeah. yeah, they use the celestial brush, yeah, he soon actually helps use it, I thought that was all, yeah, he's anime. a wandering artist, so he, yeah, so he, 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 he has the brush, huh, I thought Amy used it, yeah, that's an interesting point, um, I may have actually misspoken, it's been a while, uh, yeah, I guess she uses it with her tail, looking at the wiki really quick. Oh, that's cool. So, um, yeah, she uses it with her tail, the celestial breath, and uh bada bing bada boom. I think in the in the scope of Smash it would it would look similar ish to just how it does know at least from like a outside perspective. Outside of maybe a final smash you won't see the like painting screen show up. But yeah, yeah, obviously you would, uh, you would definitely instant. you would yeah. Yeah, you would see like the symbol up here really quick, and then like a cherry bomb appears, or whatever, or, or the sun, or whatever. Yeah. Um, of which she, she has a multitude of different 
magical techniques that you can use with the celestial brush. Um, there's like 13 main techniques. There's a few other secret techniques. Um, just looking at the main techniques, there's a lot to work with there. Um, you know, without getting into too much, I'm trying to load up the the wiki just so I have it on. I, I mean, he has the not all social brushes need yeah. to really work well for Smash. Like Sunrise, obviously doesn't work here. Rejuvenation obviously doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But you got Power Slash. Uh, you have Vine under Green Sprout yeah. that could easily work. Uh, Cherry Bomb. You yeah. could argue yeah. Yeah. Uh, Water Spout kind of maybe like a pushes Amatrasu up in the air yeah. kind of thing. Uh, Gale Storm Absolutely. would work. Inferno. Uh, Veil of Mist could, would could be a Bayonetta style counter. Please no. Mm -hmm. Don't. <laughs> that fuck shit. Uh, Thunderstorm yeah, could work. Yeah, yeah. Blizzard could easily work. Uh, I don't know what the fuck guidance is. It looks like the one where you threw me soon. Yeah, so I guess I just made its own, its own thing. Magnetism. Yeah. Probably not that one. I guess, but maybe. Though I think those two are yeah, uh, yeah, Okami and exclusive. But there's a lot that yeah, really can yeah, be used yeah. by Amaterasu. Like, I feel like you gotta have uh, Power absolutely. Slash and you gotta have Cherry Bomb, but beyond that, you're kind of open. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Um, and then there's certain certain other things, like something like Rejuvenation, you can't use in, probably can't use in the moveset. So you can so show it, like, um, in, like, collections of flowers following Amaterasu's path or whenever she runs or whatever, so that'd be yeah. a nice little aesthetic. Oh, yeah, you'd have um, to have that little flower path thing. Kind of like with, yeah, uh, and both of them would absolutely. have Isun or Sparks with them at all times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then, um, otherwise, she's bipedal. She has a multitude of different different weapons, uh, glaives, um, like reflector shields, uh, you know, holy beads um, that she can use, um, all of which are, are potential, moveset potential. And, and yeah. of course, with Smash Topia, maybe... Uh, you can have an extra skill uh, change between yeah. those three different you types. Can you can like just an extra skill yeah. where you swap between the types, or you can just have like <laughs> just use these different ones uh, in the normals in normals and a smash tag. So I kind of feel like that's been like, hey, do I have a good idea besides this for extra skill? No. Well, I guess extra skill is weapon swap. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> sometimes, so, sometimes um, it's easy to do it that way. Yeah. For sure. Or you could just... I'm going to put the stance change here for Jin Sakai so that way we don't have to worry about explaining all of it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, there you go. I mean, there, there's several points for this character that make her uh, a beloved choice. Even yeah. from people who haven't enjoyed the game. Like, she was very popular amongst our friend group for a yes. poll that we ran for most of uh, Smash character. I, I, like, um, I, I like running yeah. various polls in uh, our group discord it's been a while since the last one so we might need to look and see what i wanted to do for that one maybe revisit the mario kind of idea i was mm -hmm. gonna do but i did a poll um yeah. it was after joker was the only dlc character revealed at this point in time i just put a bunch of characters in for like hey see like what will this discord want to see in smash the most and amaterasu came out as the winner i don't remember who the who the, who the second place character was i think I, it might have been spyro shit was it well, fuck me! God damn it! Fuck. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, I, I can actually probably. I know where I can look. I have it all in okay. Google Drive. Sweet. Keep talking though. Yeah. Um, I think the thing that's against her just uh. Again, this is a bias thing, so it doesn't really matter. But so long as you're talking, I think that she has fairly decent chances of the Capcom. Uh, collective, but at the same time, you have Phoenix Wright, you have uh, potentially Ch like something like Chun Li, Joe Valentine, Leon Kennedy, uh, Monster Hunter, whatever, looking into the future. So that face tells me that Spyro was second place. It was an eight to five vote. Amaterasu beat Spyro. The, th the <laughs> third place was a nine to four vote where Phoenix Wright beat Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Funny how that works. I think we might also just in general have a bunch of Capcom fans in our group, which, to be fair, again, Capcom has such a wealth of good options. They really do. Yeah, they do. They do. All of this talk, I'm just going to end up being Cecil, who's the next Capcom character. Who? Um, 
<laughs> exactly. From Ghost Trick. Oh, Cecil. So, you said... Um, okay, yeah, I call him Cecil, not Cecil. Yeah, to me, yeah, Cecil yeah. is C-E-C-I-L. Yeah. It's like, I don't know a Cecil no, Capcom. What? <laughs> you know, still the, need to play Ghost Trick. Game. So, um, it's a fun game. That's for sure. Um, yeah, so... That's kind of loosely Amaterasu. I mean, at least from a moveset perspective and blah, blah, blah. So. Mm -hmm. it, there's definitely no denying that Amaterasu would be a very good for, for fit for Smash. She's got the great moveset oh, yeah. potential. She would move very well to Special Environment. Uh, much like Arthur, who we talked about earlier, she's playable in um, Ultimate or Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and its Ultimate uh, uh, rem Remaster? I don't really know what to call it. Game plus more characters mm -hmm. that Capcom likes doing for their fighting games. I, just, I yeah. they need to get out of that practice, seriously. But that was before, <laughs> I guess, everything started going crazy with DLC, so you know, I'll get that together. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, and then she didn't come back for um, Marvel's Capcom Infinite, I don't think. But Infinite was not a no, good yeah. game. Yeah. A lot of Marvel Yikes. versus Capcom fans have come back for Infinite. <laughs> yeah, so. the, the the community stuck with three and two. Two two was mm -hmm. actually getting a. There's rumors that there's been a big fan push for two to be re released, and rumor is that Capcom and Marvel are talking again. So sweet, hey, that should be fun. Let uh, it come forth. Yeah, but um, I'm, I'm gonna try to like. There's no denying she's got a lot of good potential. And I'd be down to see Amatrox, especially if she's the final character gets revealed or was revealed, considering again when we recorded this. I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. That's a great choice. Is yeah. she my number one? Yeah. No. Is she my top ten? Probably not. But fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah. as for Spyro though, Spyro, as I mentioned earlier, um, and mentioned in the last Mashtopia episode we did. Uh, he doesn't have nearly as many yep. tools as uh, Amaterasu does. He has his standard fire breath. He has a charging attack where he, you know, puts his head down and he just runs forward. He can hit things with his, with his horns. Enemies that are immune to his flames that are wearing armor, he has to do a charge attack against them. He can do a horn dive mm -hmm. where he jumps in the air and then plummets straight down with his horns. He can swim and climb ladders, but I don't think that'd really do anything in Smash. <laughs> you know, it'd be that could be his up special. <laughs> I mean, no, he he can he can fucking fly. He really does more of a glide. Yeah. But then there are specific levels where he does fly around, and he can do things like a loop de loop while he's trying to flame down specific targets to destroy them in a time attack. Uh, in later games, mm -hmm. he gets ice breath. He'll get lightning breath. He gets bubble breath. <laughs> yeah. yeah he has some kind of in even later games the legend of spire games like he has some kind of like an earthquake like technique he has dragon kata dragon martial arts i i didn't <laughs> play the legend of spyro games i stick with the classic one so i don't really understand what's mm -hmm. going on there but you know that's with awesome that, that's uh, awesome yep you could even have something with Sparks where uh, in Spyro 3, there are special levels where you play as Sparks in a very much a, uh, a shoot-em-up. Uh, kind, of, kind of a bullet hell-like scenario. Should they do that? You pro pro probably don't do that. Unless it's like the final smash or something is Sparks in a shoot-em-up, which would be pretty funny, actually. But I don't think <laughs> they really should do that. So like he, the problem yeah. with him is he doesn't have nearly as many tools. On the summoning character topic, you could because he has allies that he helps out in Spyro Three, being Sheila, uh, Bentley, Agent Nine, and um, who's the four? Yeah, Sergeant Bird, the most popular of them. How could I forget Sergeant Bird? And you could even argue Hunter in there as well as somebody that could he could kind of summon. But I don't really think Spy if you're gonna do a summoning character. It's not Spyro. You got you. Do you like right. a Pokemon trainer for that? But, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the main point is, like, he doesn't have as many tools, but he is kind of like a star of PlayStation platforming. There for a while, him along with Crash 
Uh, they were two of the big mascots for Sony and PlayStation. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, um, oh, yeah. they kind of, after, after Spyro 3, they were kind of done with him. They didn't really feel like they had anything more to do. So they just moved on to, I believe, uh, Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, it was Ratchet and Clank that they moved on to after Spyro. And they just, they wanted to do more things yeah. with a character that had a gun. Which, whatever. But... He, he still calls back for a lot of us fans of the old PlayStation days. I think more people probably care about Crash and Spyro, but I will always be more in Spyro's court there. Yeah, yeah. So will I. So will I. Um, Spyro is just what I grew up on playing. Crash was always a little bit un unattainable, the six-year-old me, you know, <laughs> being yeah. a little difficult. Um, so I so I latched on to Spyro. Both both phenomenal um, characters and with with a lot of legacy, but uh, my, my personal flavor has always been Spyro. I've always enjoyed like the open, the more open levels as well. Um, felt more, it always felt more like an adventure. And, yeah. uh, and growing up with that was a uh, kind of more instrumental than I think I'd give Spyro credit for. Like that was the PS1 thing to play. Yeah. Um, for, for me, me absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, so, and I and I think um, again, Spyro may not have as much to Okami as Ultrasa does, though. But to but his credit, um, it means he again, has more that is symbolic to him. Right. It's it's again, it's the point of legacy. The character has more legacy than Amaterasu. Amaterasu is one great Capcom character in a slew of great Capcom characters, um, who given was from a very popular cult classic game. Um, very good cult classic game. It's also just from that one game. Yeah. Well, uh, Okamiden. Loosely Okamiden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Spyro, I mean, apparently was in an Archie Comics crossover between Mega Man and Sonic as well, where Woodman and Princess Sally Acorn recruited Amaterasu to fight Sigma. So there's that. <laughs> a little token of knowledge I just saw. <laughs> what? Yep. Yeah. Were yeah, the that's credits of Archie Comics high like the whole time? Like I don't mean for that yet, but like the entire time. Because first of all, when mm -hmm. like Archie itself is like, okay, sure, you have a comic about a guy with high school drama. Yeah, that that sells. But the one I first found out they like Archie did Sonic stuff too, and like they have crossovers like what? Why? <laughs> What? <laughs> and now you're telling me there's a Seriously. fucking Amaterasu and Mega Man crossover? It's just like, what the fuck? Does Capcom own Archie Comics? Well, no, that would have existed with Sonic. They must be I don't know. What the fuck? Archie, listen, go back to Are Netflix. We're going to get Actually, a Riverdale and Smash now? Wow. I think that show got canceled or is being canceled now that I think about it. I don't know. I never yeah, watched they, that. They've, it's just one of those things, yeah. No, oh, God, me either. They they just wrapped up their storyline, I think. Okay. Um, for those who care, which is not either of us. <laughs> I'd be more so, likely um, to watch the Sabrina Teenage Witch reboot. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Even me too. though it's in the Pretty same universe as Archie, but... which seems very weird. Like, fucking random. Uh -huh. Why? Uh huh. They're going to they're gonna get Archie and commit some sort of blood ritual on him, and they'll be like, um so uh yeah the, the, it's kind of a similar battle to Marx and Gino where Marx has more to his uh character yeah Gino has uh, has more of the looming right. um legacy attack to him. um although Spyro has appeared in more games than Gino so he's kind of like a Marx Spyro has Gino appeared hybrid. in a lot of um, games even like not just in his games he's appeared yeah. in Crash Bandicoot's cameos mm -hmm. mostly but uh there is that whole spyro mm -hmm. and crash crossover that was really bad on game boy <laughs> uh Spy yeah. er, spyro orange and crash purple they had they had yeah. concepts there and then they made it dumb yep they sure did that was fun uh and spyro's in crash tag team racing on pr and yes uh, Yes, he is. Very glad about this is, that. This is pretty darn cool. And so, yeah, uh, so what was Fire Fix already, too? I, I think Nasty Nork and Hunter oh, are in, yeah. if I remember correctly. The game yeah. also has a you know, playable that's point. Yeah. crate. Like, what? Oh, yeah. They, they, all, they, have, <laughs> they have Rillaroo and fixed Rillaroo. 
-hmm. Like, what? The developers were memeing hard. People hated the redesign for Rillaroo in that game. They were just like, this looks bad. Mm -hmm. And the response was like, okay. Here was fixed Rillaroo <laughs> as a separate character <laughs> and it with a different face. It's like, you fucking meme lords. Oh, yeah. What have you done? That's and people, people, awesome. I think like the, the Metal Crate one was like, I think, I think it was Metal Crate. Like somebody joked around, it's like, what are they going to add for a character next? A Metal Crate? And the devs were just like, well, not next, but our last character is going to be. It's like, what the fuck? Jesus. That's awesome. I yeah, both love Rilla it and Rue hate it. Like Eddie Ray in that original one. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, that's I don't great. Like that. that's I like Eddie, great. but I don't like that. <laughs> Rilla Rue also was original to Crash Bash. So he was always just this super minor character. Yeah, and yet here he is. Yeah. Yay. Rilla Rue. <laughs> I, I do have to say, like, now that we're on We've the side moved, topic, yeah. uh, that, that Crash, uh, the review for Crash Team Racing, I love what they did with all the characters. They added so many characters to that game. They, they combined both the original Crash Team Racing and Nitro Kart together with its rosters. They added the mm -hmm. trophy stand girls as playable characters. They added so much. They added, okay, they did also add, like, baby crash or whatever it was like okay well mario kart is kind of <laughs> me numb to that idea but what the fuck ever what's the day i didn't spiral it's like all right we're all oh good again god. yeah oh god baby crash Jesus. yeah get me out of here yeah <laughs> mario kart's the reason they did it but still good yeah it's just like i said like the developers that game were 100 percent memeing there's no fu uh -huh. adding a adding the fucking crate and fixed really was like, okay, if you didn't think they were memeing before, you have to realize that they are now. Like seriously, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ! Absolutely. I think I think the one unfortunate Absolutely. thing about that game is that it came out before Crash Four, so we didn't get to have mm -hmm. alternate timeline Tana Bandicoot. We oh, didn't yeah. get her as a racer. Like, if we could get just like one more DLC, Tana Bandicoot from Crash Four, so goddamn good. absolutely. Oh man, Absolutely. I'm, I'm looking at the playable roster now. <laughs> Some of these characters I don't recognize because they were in like the Game Boy version only. I'm pretty sure. Like Entrance was in the wow. Game Boy version of Crash Team Racing or Crash Nitro Kart, but I don't think he was in the main one. Yeah, we have we have original Tana, but we don't have alternate reality Tana. Baby Crash, Baby Coco, mm -hmm. Baby T. We don't have no no Baby Cortex. That feels weird. I don't know who Pasadena Opossum is. I have no idea who that character is. All these DLCs, Rillaroo, fucking Yaya Panda, who the fuck are you? I don't know. They added in the, <laughs> oh no, there's Baby Cortex. They added in the lab assistant generic enemy as a race. Like, what? What? Fuck. Iron checkpoint crate was the final Baby answer. Jesus. Cortex. See, the, these, this, <laughs> these, these devs were just bonkers. My god. Uh-huh. Oh my god! <laughs> Love it though. Love this is it. what this episode is now. This is, yeah. this is the Crash Tag Team Racing, and now it's oh my god, that was so awesome to see that first. Okay, um, anyway, anyways, anyway. uh, Smasher Dash Spyro, not Crash versus Amaterasu, not not Conquer? Dante. Sure, not yeah. Dante. That works better. Yeah. Let's, boy, let's oh be boy. real. Let's be yeah. real with these characters. We both know where each other is leading. We we know what the result is. <laughs> we knew what the result of this was going to be. I think we need to rip the band aid off. We've been talking about what the result was going to be since we made this episode. Then <laughs> you're not wrong. We we knew going yeah. into this episode with this idea exactly what the results for both of these battles were going to be, because we know each other. There's been very few times where yeah. I feel like one of us has surprised the other with our Smasher Dash pick. Very few times. Right. So right. let's just get right. this out of the way. Yeah, I agree. I'm going with the character okay. that I love. You're going with the character that you love. I'm going with Spyro. You're going with Amaterasu. A correct. Correct. Um, and as 
Gina was the number one character in the bingo episode for you. Matrasu is the number one character in the bingo episode for me. So and Spyro was my number was one already under there. Uh, the Activision slot. Yeah, Spyro is my most. Yours was Crash though. Spyro care. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bitch. Uh, I I so, was approaching that kind of a kind of from a different angle. So. You you were in some respects. Yeah. Uh, so with that means, you know, once again, we have a type or a smasher dash. If you're new to smasher dashes, if you're new to super cast brothers, what this means is that now we turn it to you. Viewers, mm -hmm. however many of you they are, you can vote on YouTube comments, you can vote on the Instagram post, you can vote on the Facebook post, you can vote on the Twitter post, which I just found out today we do Twitter posts. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> it's, yeah. I'm not yeah. in charge of the promotion. <laughs> He is. Right. Uh, or, you know, <laughs> if you have us in, on Discord, you can message us on Discord as well. We have a Discord channel that we don't really promote because, mm -hmm. to be honest, it doesn't get a whole lot of use. But, hey, do, why don't we put those in the descriptions? Why haven't we been doing that? There's always a time to begin. <laughs> I feel like we're going <laughs> to start putting the Discord too. link in the description if you ever want to join us in there. Uh, it's not a super active Discord, but hey, if you ever want to post something in there and ask us questions or whatever else, we'll answer. Uh, Kelly Jelly, um, who we kind of thought yeah. before, he writes, um, shorts, I, I don't know if I would call them short stories, no, vignettes, vignettes is what he calls them, of, uh, what if different characters oh. were getting to smash and how they would react to characters, like he's done Shantae, uh, he's done, uh, Makoto Nayagi from Dangarampa. He's done uh, recently Manny Calavera from Grim Fandango, and just like them interacting with the Smash world, and it's it's a they're fun reads. Uh, Conquer is in there. He and he posts yeah. them uh, in that Discord as well. So if that sounds fun to you. I mean, go ahead and join us in there. Or ask us anything you want. Yeah, but yeah, absolutely. Give it's, us your votes. It's who not who you want. Yeah, between Spyro and Amaterasu, and then when we get to our next Smash Smash Redash episode, we'll reveal the true winner. Absolutely. And friends who are listening or friends who participate in this matchup, um, if you really want to show us where your allegiance is and where the most love that you hold for the either of us lie, this is now your chance. Yeah. Which one of us do you love more? The freak? Yeah. Let's or the guy that keeps keep the ship there. running? The... Uh, the guy with the power to One cancel the... Actually, the I guess we both technically much. have the power to cancel the show. We can easily screw the other person over <laughs> at any time. It'd be easy yeah, to do. Much. We both have access to the YouTube channel. We can easily nuke it if we ever decide we hate each other. Yeah. Turns out we were the mystery deleters all along. <gasps> are you committing? Are you, are, you, are you admitting you did it? Are you the mystery deleter? Yeah, me nope. either. I'm, I swear <laughs> to God, it has to be DK3. It had to be him. Who else would have? I swear to God. I don't know. We will never Someone know for sure. We will never know. If you don't know what we're talking about, uh, way back on Mercurius, just to have put this right out there, on the Mercurius website where we met, there was a uh, role-play tournament as where we all picked characters and we were fighting as them against each other. We made it to the final round of Zark characters, G out the dwarf, bad boy man for him. And then our thread got deleted mid-combat. We're just like, we never knew who did it. We never had a winner declared. I swear to God, it was DK3, the admin, who just didn't like that we were doing something other than Smash Brothers on the, on the forum. I swear it had to be. Anyways, though, next time on... I almost called this Smashtopia. But that's the name of the wiki. Next time on Super Cast Brothers, yep. we're getting back to an on-topic episode. And we're going to be discussing whoever our final fighter is. You guys already know it yeah. if you're watching this episode. We don't because we are a week away still from knowing who that character is. And we're just like, fucking tell us already. Where are the leaks? Yeah. Give uh, me the information. Um, I want to know so bad. And we'll be talking about that yeah. on our next on topic, getting our reactions. If the character has released by the time we're able to record, we'll have played as them, given our thoughts on that, like we've tried doing for the last several characters. But if we can't, then we'll just talk about what we see in the Sakurai Presents. 
and anything else Sakurai happens to reveal to us if he does reveal anything new. I'm personally not expecting any new bonus characters or anything like that. Mm-hmm. If anything, maybe a boss rush mode. That's the only other thing I might expect to see outside of yeah. uh, Fighter yeah. Pack alone. Yeah. Agreed. Um, he did say that modes are pretty much done, but boss rush is the one he, thing that's missing. He did, um, but then we have a boss mm-hmm. rush mode in Sephiroth's classic mode and also Seriously. at the end of World of Light. Yeah. So it's like, why not just easily put that in its own mode? I don't get it. What the fuck? Like a, yeah, there's a certain element in World of Light too. Um, going to spoiler territories that I feel should be playable outside of World of Light too. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be hard to mm-hmm. do. Copy paste. No, it would not. Programs for copying yeah. that. But copy go. paste. Yeah, seriously. Um, and you want to you want to toss in really quick before before we leave your final prediction will be just. Out of a nowhere. Pokemon. A Gen uh, 8 Pokemon or something to do with Arceus Legends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't uh, want it's it to the be final, true, but that's kind of what I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a fair choice. Um, I, I'm expecting final to be choice disappointed in general. Uh, we, we shall see, yeah. I will say it's the final roll of the dice. I just don't care i can't come up with a correct um conclusion so uh holy cows it's gonna be it's gonna be amaterasu wow can't believe it gonna be gino can't believe it there you go it's gonna be gino riding amaterasu who's flying instead of soon yep Spyro Gino, the, the star of Gino's soul has in, has gone inside of Isun's body, so it's going to be big-sized Isun, <laughs> but it could be Gino inside of Isun, personality-wise, and you still have the arm cannon. That's there you it. go. That's, that's the that's character. Yeah. We're done. Yep. Goodbye. <laughs>